Thanks for watching this free video tutorial, which is a free sample from our course Comprehensive Introduction to Corona for 3ds Max. It is a massive 9 hour long course in which we explore all the aspects of Corona for 3ds Max thoroughly. Make sure to visit our website mographplus.com and check the entire course out. In this lesson, we learn about image-based lighting, exterior lighting and the scene environment section of the Corona render settings. When we talk about image-based lighting or IBL, we mean instead of using traditional lights, we use a 360 degrees image that has a very dynamic range, usually in EXR or HDR formats and define that image as our environment map. And this way, the render engine uses the color and intensity values of that image to illuminate the scene. And if done right, it can provide very realistic lighting. You can use this method to light an interior shot or an exterior one, and you can find tons of free and commercial HDRIs online. For the first part of this tutorial, we want to use an HDRI image to light the current scene, which is an interior shot basically. We have some books and this clock and this bottle, so let's see how we can go about it. The first thing to do would be to load your desired HDRI image into your 3ds Max environment. To do that, let's open up our material editor by pressing M, right click, maps, general, and bitmap. You can use the Corona bitmap node as well, but for HDR images, I tend to use the native 3ds Max bitmap. And here I have this hotel room 4K HDRI, which is a free HDRI from hdrihaven.com that is spelled H-D-R-I-H-A-V-E-N.com. Select open and click OK. Double click on the bitmap node and click on view image to be able to see the entire HDRI here. Great. Now we need to connect this map to our environment. So press A to open up the environment and effects window and simply instance the map as the environment map. Now close the environment window. To see the map in the viewport, press Alt and B and change the viewport background to use environment background and press OK. Now we can see the map in the viewport as well. Using the offset U value, you can rotate the HDRI map and place it however you want. In this case, let's set the offset U value to 0.18 and let's start the interactive rendering and see what we get. As you can see from the render, the HDRI image is responsible for the lighting in the scene. Uh, to avoid those burnout areas in the render, we can increase the highlight compression to about 1.8. That would be enough for this scene. And as you can see, by simply plugging an HDR image to our environment, we get a very beautiful and realistic lighting. There is another way of setting an HDRI image as your environment. If you open up the render setup window and go to the scene tab, we have this scene environment section and here is set to use 3ds max settings in the environment tab but you can entirely skip the environment tab and change the scene environment to use corona option and simply hook your hdri image here for now let's set it to use 3ds max environment tab then we have three environment overrides for direct visibility, reflections and refractions. Obviously, you can connect a different HDRI compared to your environment HDRI and that map will be used in direct visibility, reflections or refractions. So, for example, if I go to the material editor and this time load another free HDRI, this time from hdrlabs.com. Make sure environment and spherical environment mapping are enabled for this image. Set the U offset for this one to 0.55 and connect it to the direct visibility override slot and run the interactive rendering. You notice the lighting is coming from the HDRI that we have defined as our environment map, 
but because of the new HDRI that we defined as our direct visibility override, that map is visible in our render, but it does not affect the lighting whatsoever. Let's disable direct visibility override for now and close the render setup window and get back to the material editor. In case you wanted to increase or decrease the brightness of your HDR, you can use the output section of the general bitmap or corona bitmap, or I tend to use the corona color correct map, which allows for some linear adjustments of the HDRI's exposure. If you click and drag from the output port of the map, and let go of the mouse and go to corona maps and load a color correct node, and um, connect this color correct node to the environment instead of the original map, and run the interactive rendering. I can use this exposure value of the Corona Color Correct map to increase and decrease the brightness of the HDRI map in a linear fashion, which can be very useful, especially if you have other lights in the scene and you uh, don't want to use the uh, scene's exposure to control the brightness of your scene. For now, let's set it back to zero. We are basically done with the first part of this lesson. For the final render, I would like to have some depth of field. So select the corner camera and enable depth of field in its settings. And set the F number to four. So we get a very, very shallow depth of field. I'm going to change my secondary GI solver from UHD cache to path tracing because we don't have a difficult lighting and the direct lighting from the HDRI reaches almost everywhere. And the last thing would be to enable uh, full denoising. I think we are ready for the final render. So let's stop the interactive rendering. And now we can start the final render. The render is still going on, but I've already done this render before. So what you need to do is to stop the render when the image gets clean. And please be sure to press the stop button and not the cancel button. If you press the stop button, uh, basically only if you click the stop button, the noising will be applied after the render. Or you can obviously set a time limit for like you know 20 minutes, 10 minutes, or pass limits for like 30 passes. And then when the render reaches that pass or time limit, the render will be stopped automatically and denoising will be applied afterwards. If you go to the uh, stats tab of the frame buffer, down here in the performance section, you can see the number of total passes that has been rendered and the noise level. Uh, normally at 32 or for more complex scenes, 64 passes can be considered a good quality render or noise level below 3%. But ultimately, you can decide on when to stop the render based on what you see. Here, if I just press stop, the render will be uh, stopped. And after that, uh, obviously, as you can see that the noising is being applied. One good thing about Corona is even if you stop the render before reaching the defined pass, noise, or time limit in the render settings, you can simply click and hold on this render button and choose resume last, and the render will resume from where you stopped it. Even if you have reached the pass, noise, or time limit, you can simply increase those after you have stopped the render in your render settings and resume the render afterwards. Now I have rendered this scene for 32 passes and saved out a CXR or Corona EXR version of my render to my drive. And you can do that simply from this. If you click and hold the save button. And if I go to where I've saved this CXR file and open it up, uh, you can see this will open up the render in Corona image editor, which has a very similar interface to Corona frame buffer, where we can do some quick color correction on our render. Obviously, you can do the same thing in Corona Frame Buffer, but uh, because of the uh, recording purposes, I'm using Image Editor in this case. For now, let's set the white balance to about uh, 6000 to cast out some of that warm tones. Increase the contrast to 2. Filmic shadows to 0.5. 
enable the curves and make the shadows a bit bluer, just a tad. And now you can save out the image as a JPG or PNG or EXR. Okay, we're done with the first part of this lesson. In the next part, I'll be showing you how to do exterior lighting with what we just learned. For the second part of this lesson, we have this exterior scene. It's a free exterior scene from 3darkshop.com. The scene has been stripped to its bare minimum. It has no texture and no foliage, and I've just applied a default corona material to everything um, and a glass material to the windows. If I run the interactive rendering, we just get a black render because we have no light. So let's open up the material editor, add a bitmap node. We have another gorgeous HDRI from hdrihaven.com. It's called The Sky is on Fire. And let's view it and load it. The only thing we need to do is to assign it to our environment. So let's open up the environment and effects window and instance it there as the environment. Press Alt and B and use environment map as the viewport background. Let's set the U offset for this map to about 0.8. In the render setting, make sure the secondary GI is set to path tracing as we are rendering an exterior scene. Even though it's a simple exterior scene, so UHD cache can probably be used, but let's stick with the principle and use path tracing and run the interactive rendering. And now we get this beautiful render by simply using that HDRI. For this render, let me cast out some of that cooler tones by setting the white balance to 7200. Increase the contrast to 2 and filmic shadows to 0.5. And there you have it. The HDRI we are using was taken close to sunset, so the shadows are very diffused and stuff. That's why we don't get any sharp shadows. But if for any reason you wanted to get any, you know, a bit sharper shadows, you can add a Corona Sun and align it to where the sun is located in the HDRI and then increase the sun intensity or decrease it to kind of match with the lighting from the HDRI. In this lesson, we learn about image-based lighting, exterior lighting, and the scene environment section of the Corona render settings. See you in the next lesson. Thanks for watching this free video tutorial, which is a free sample from our course Comprehensive Introduction to Corona for 3ds Max. It is a massive 9 hour long course in which we explore all the aspects of Corona for 3ds Max thoroughly. Make sure to visit our website mographplus.com and check the entire course out.